All right, so our last two remaining parts, the distributor cap and rotor, have officially arrived. I'm going to go ahead and get busy replacing those, and that'll wrap up this uh, forklift revival. Alright, so as I said before, the greatest thing about this Yale forklift is it does have a Mazda engine. However, in ordering car parts online, nonetheless, I ordered most of the stuff from, I ordered basically everything from Rock Auto because they do have the best price. They don't sponsor anything. I'm just cheap like you are, and I don't feel like going down to the local auto parts store and having them basically do the same thing I'm doing, which is order and wait for it. Uh, I would rather do that on my own and save money in the process. So the only downside to that is sometimes you get the wrong parts that you do have to go through the trouble of returning back to them and then waiting for the reimbursement instead of just going into a brick and mortar store and getting your money back on the car within three business days. So that's kind of what happened or what's going to happen with the distributor cap and maybe a rotor. They have a lot of parts listed. I'm buying parts for like a 1971 to two Mazda. Uh, I think it's like B1200 or 1600 or 808 or some early 70s Mazda four-cylinder. Uh, this thing's like 1,398 cc, so you got to find something within that family, which that didn't come exactly in that size in the cars. But there's a lot of crossover parts that are bolt-on accessories, which is what we're having to deal with right now, ignition component-wise. Obviously, a distributor cap is one of those things. And there's a few part numbers listed in that year and category. JH67T is one of those things. Unfortunately, it is not the right size. So it looks like it is correct in the picture, uh, but it's massively bigger. Uh, this is a two and a half inch distributor cap. The one that is on the UA or UV model um, Mazda engines for the Yale forklift is a two inch. It's tiny in comparison. So we got the right one now. The correct part number is 5D1356 and you can cross reference that with uh, several other numbers. I think I cross reference it to actually get that part number. Uh, maybe it's just a JH67 without the T, and I think that's how I cross-reference everything. I'll double-check before I post this and confirm right here whether I'm correct or wrong, and uh, hopefully give you guys a little bit more to go on. Now I've got the new cap and rotor on there. One thing that's uh, kind of interesting is this thing was so worn out, I knew it was worn out, um, but it actually wiggled on the distributor housing and I thought that might have been just poor design from the get-go. Turns out it's not. 
this cap was so worn out that it had worn out a lot of the plastic housing and allowed it to twist ever so slightly. And what that can do is it can wreak havoc on any ignition timing that you've got set. Obviously, if this thing is moving in the cap, the actual metal contact points on the inside are moving as well. So your timing is never really consistent uh, for as much as that cap you know, moves or vibrates or anything like that. So that can cause a lot of issues. If you have one, on a Yale Mazda UA or UV style engine that has a loose cap and the base isn't moving, probably look into uh, putting a new distributor cap on. Now for the rotors themselves, I, I did buy two different part numbers because uh, the original one, the JR169, was really, really tight going on and uh, I thought maybe that might have been the incorrect part. Uh, so I bought another one, 4R1112, and turns out they appear to be the same exact part. Even though they're cross-referencing to different uh, style of parts or things like that in the cross-reference database, um, this does not coincide with this one, but they appear physically to be the same part. So they both are kind of a pain to get on there. They do fit and they do work. They don't fit as loose as the original one, uh, but they do appear to be pretty much the exact same. So, and that may be a good thing. Maybe they're supposed to fit really, really tight. I know the distributor cap fits a lot tighter. So, and that's a good thing. All right. So that's uh, gonna bring this one to a wrap. I replaced a, a fuel filter, a hydraulic oil filter, the engine oil and that filter had been replaced a few months prior. I uh, got a new muffler on it. We got new plugs, new wires that we shortened from their ridiculous 17,000 million long feet to a more enjoyable race length, lightweight, space savings, and it looks pretty, right? Uh, we replaced the distributor cap, the rotor, the condenser, the contact points, a voltage regulator, and I went ahead and threw on a new ignition coil as well, just to replace all the ignition components. Sometimes if you replace just one or a select few of the components within the system, it can cause problems with the new versus the old and make the new wear out faster or break the old. So went ahead and uh, just replaced everything this time, which is what I should have done in the beginning when I acquired this piece of machinery. That's gonna bring this one to a wrap. You know what to do now. If you haven't done so, please click that like button, make that thumbs up turn blue. If you enjoy this kind of stuff, please consider subscribing. If you're going to go through all the trouble of hitting that red subscribe button, turn on your bell notifications as well. That way you get notified just as soon as I post another video. I appreciate it as always. And until next time, thank you so very much for watching this video.